Check out this camo. Oh yes, I am liking that. That is definitely right up my street. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. Oh, and it just gets better. I've got another one here. Another Bagara B14 Extreme Hunter. Here's another one for you. Oh, in the same camo, but just a different color. Look at that. Oh yes, totally, totally cool. Nice, nice rifles. Well, let me tell you about these then. So, I took this one for a bit of a spin. You might just see right now in the footage. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with this as a hunting rifle. Not mega bucks either. And I do like, I've got to say, value for money. And I think with these Bagaras, you get some serious value for money. Right, let me throw out some specs. So this is the B14 Hunter Extreme. There's various ways of naming this thing but on the box it says b14 extreme hunter camo to be precise okay this one is in 308 this one is in 65 creedmoor so i have two but i took the 308 for a spin as you can see the footage <laughs> um specifications wise it weighs in between 7.1 and 7.3 pounds Overall length is 41 and a half inches, between 41 and a half inches and 44 inches, depending on which barrel you go for. This barrel is, to be precise, uh, an 18 inch. They both are on these two rifles, 18 inches. They have what's called a number four taper on the barrel, fluted barrel, as you can see. They are finished in Cerakote. So this one is the black graphite Cerakote. This one is in like an FDE Cerakote. Super smooth actions. Bagara performance triggers. You've got a four round magazine on these, on the magazine, ver on the, sorry, on the ma Magnum versions. I'll get my words out. You have a three round magazine. Non Magnum, it is a four round magazine. Barrel length is between 22 and 24 inches. Again, whatever you, uh, you know, basically go for. Now I'll just read off some specs of the different calibers because it's quite interesting. So 6.5 Creedmoor, like this one, unscoped, is 7.1 pounds. Overall length is 41 and a half inches. Barrel length is 22 inches. Not on this one though, but I'm just reading off uh, configuration options that you can have. 308 is 7.1 in, 7.1 pounds even, 243, 7.1 pounds, 22, 250, 7.1 pounds. Uh, seven millimeter 08 is 7.1 pounds in weight. 270 Winchester is 7.3 pounds, 30 odd six, 7.3. Seven millimeter rem mag, 7.3, and 300 wind mag is 7.3 as well. So just to give you an idea of the weight when it comes to the different calibers. Now guys, I've got to say, I've really enjoyed using this one. And just in case, if you are interested, it is wearing a Hawk Endurance scope. Just thought I'd sort of throw on one of the smallest scopes I've got here at present here in the rat cave just to give this thing a bit of a spin and it performed really well in fact the action on this rifle is so so smooth it is so smooth it's just super super slick uh, dead impressed with it i had no hold ups no hiccups whatsoever with this rifle it was really really nice there is your magazine, polymer magazine, which uh, I'm not that fussed about if I'm totally honest. Um, how they sort of bear up uh, over time uh, remains to be seen. But on this rifle, you know, as I was using it, it was pretty cold, the conditions I was using this thing in, it, it was all right. You know, it's an, it's an extreme hunter, so it's gonna be able to deal with it, I'm sure it is. 
um, but I had no problems with the magazines or any feed issues. Just It was just 100%, 100%. I used various ammo, various different types of ammo, uh, various different loads. I was mainly using, I'm just looking over to my uh, ammo. I was using some Remington Corlocked, uh, the 150 grain mainly. I'm just grabbing them. Okay, I do save my empty boxes. Uh, so I was using, yeah, the Core Locked, um, 150 grain, seem to like those, uh, 150 grain uh, PPU as well. I didn't do any paper, uh, I just, well I got it zeroed on paper, um, but I was just pinging steel basically, just having a bit of fun on steel. But. I was getting pretty good groups on the steel. Now, the reason I'm not done paper, this is not a demo gun. This is a brand new rifle that has been kindly loaned to me from Livens Gun Shop. So you've got the, I like to be fair with new rifles. You've kind of got to give them a bit of a breaking process before you can sort of really nail down accuracy. I know a lot of manufacturers say, oh, it's guaranteed sub my way out of the box. Yeah, I get that, but you've got to use the ammo that they were using in the factory and I've not always got what they were using in the in the factory. So you've got to sort of be be a little bit realistic, you know. I don't I don't care what any other sort of reviewer says. You've got to be realistic. So I didn't do paper with this because it's barely broken. I put about I think I put about 80 rounds through it all together. You know, and I was allowing it. I, I had several guns that I was using at the same time, so I was giving this cool down time because, at the end of the day, this is a hunting rifle and not a target rifle. So, how many shots you're going to have on a on a hunt realistically? Three, two or three, depends what you're shooting, I guess. But you know, there we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you this rifle because it's a little bit lighter for me holding up um, to the camera because that one is scoped up. But let's have a closer look then and we'll take it from the stock end. So it is a reinforced fiberglass stock, okay, in this awesome Viper. I think it's like the Viper Urban Camo, they call it. It's pretty cool. I do like it. I do like it. Fairly soft recoil pad, uh, pretty nice. I think it's got Bagara's logo there, look. Sling swivel stud. This one is quite interesting because it's a fairly ambidextrous stock, whereas on this um, 308, it has got a cheek piece. So it's more sort of uh, right-handed than anything. But I mean, I used it, I was, I was all right with it. I managed to hit what I was shooting at. Um, kind of slightly different actually when you look at it, these these particular rifles. So this one has got like the, um, it's more of the, more elegant, should I say, <laughs> pistol grip. So, you know, it's slightly different, this one is. This one's got checker in, okay. So, and checker in on the fore end as well. Just a real, real cool, cool looking rifle in this in this camouflage. Let me, in fact, I'm gonna show you this one. I may as well show you the one I was using. It kind of makes sense. So that is the pistol grip there. More of a, more of a, a pistol grip, if that makes sense. You've got like this, um, this slight texturing or textured panels like diamond shape, not checkering, but texturing. I don't know what you really call that. Pretty grippy, but you've got like those three panels there. Oh, knocking my lights over. And you've got it on the fore end there as well. Okay. It is optional when you, if you get one of these rifles that you can take the sticker off. Just thought I'd mention that. Um, obviously, all reinforced uh, fiberglass, the stock is pretty lightweight. I mean, you know, this is like an average sort of weighing rifle for this sort of styling hunting rifle. It's, it's, I don't know. I've used a lot, a 
and I mean a lot of hunting rifles, and I've used a lot of target rifles. This isn't the lightest rifle I've used as far as a hunting rifle is concerned, um, but I don't know, it, it is super pointable. There's no doubt about that. Remington 700 style safety, I mean, these are very similar to the 700. There's, you know, there's no doubt about it. Metal trigger guard. Um, like I said, you've got, you got your uh, polymer magazine. I'll show you inside there, the magwell. Okay, there is your magazine catch there. That feels, I don't know, it's all right. I'd kind of want something a little bit bigger if I'm honest, but then again, like I said, how many shots do you have when you're hunting? But myself, I would, well, to be fair, I kind of get why that's flush, so you don't accidentally drop your magazine out, so I kind of get that, but if you're wearing gloves, you just might find it a little bit fiddly to get your finger in there to pop the magazine out. I don't know, that's, that's just my sort of take on it. Fluted bolt. Uh, super super smooth bolt and it's, you've got like the tactical style um, bolt handle there uh, cocked indicator so obviously it is empty and then you can see your cocked indicator there just about and if I pull the trigger very awkwardly you'll see it drop in super smooth action it has got a two log uh, bolt head there and it's what uh, Bagara call their tapered bolt face really cool that's all coated. it is so so slick so slick let me just show you down there well I've got that out very very cool guys very cool I say it's so nice to shoot this rifle was 308 yeah I know as you can see in the footage I'm uh, shooting out of my uh, Coldwell lead sled so that is was sort of taking up <laughs> the recoil a little bouncy in 308 yeah but I was kind of shooting it in a target orientated um, situation you know um, so you wouldn't obviously be shooting it out of a lead sled like I was, but I did have a couple of shots, two or three shots with it, um, sort of free hand. It's not so bad, I mean, three away. It, it is a little bit pokey, but you know, it is it is what it is. I've, I've, I've shot bigger calibers three hand, free hand. Yeah, um, we'll say no more about that, but um, you know, it's it is what it is. 6.5 Creedmoor is going to be nice and gentle. Obviously, other calibers are going to be far more gentle. Or you can go for the Magnum calibers that are going to be a little bit more pokey. But uh, very, very nice rifle, guys. I mean, it's it's a cool option. If you are after a nice-looking hunting rifle, you know, and you don't want to sort of spend a massive amount. I mean, there's so much competition. I don't know what... If I was after a hunting rifle right now, I mean a lot, I know a lot of guys go for the Tikas, I know that, and I get it, Tikas are awesome. But I don't know what would I go for? I'd probably go for the BRX one from Beretta. I think that'd be my first uh first choice, you know. I just like the straight pull, and I think it's the um the NATO tests that that Beretta has passed that really impressed me. Go check that video out. In fact, I'll put I'll put it up there um, at the end of the video so you can click on that. The Beretta BRX1, nice option if you are in the market for a hunting rifle. But I've really enjoyed using this Bagara. Uh, it's my first. I think it's my first centerfire Bagara that I've used. Dead impressed. I'm going to go through the entire range, guys, and show you them all. So, you know, sit tight for that. It's all coming. Uh, I'll show you everything that I can about them. Screw cut. I know I'm bouncing around from here to there, but screw cut as well. So you can throw on a mod. Okay, nice slender forehead. Probably the only little gripe is the way. I don't know how they've put this camo on. I'm not sure, but you, and I don't know whether it's actually 
the pattern that's created this, you know, the way they've put the camo on, or it's just the molding of the stock. Uh, but you do see a line all the way down there. I don't know if I can see it or can show you better. Probably on the pistol grip there. You can kind of see it, that center line. Uh, I don't know, would that bother me? Probably not. Would it bother you? Yeah, probably would. I know you guys are real fussy. Um, but I don't know, just, I'm really liking this rifle. Right, let's give the trigger pull for you trigger snobs and uh, see, what, uh, see what it is doing. Obviously, we have no live rounds in there. And let's see what uh, this thing is pulling at. Did I take the safety off? Yeah, I did. Ooh, look at that. Two pounds, 10 ounces, dead on. Let's pull the uh, 651. Both brand new rifles. Let's pull this one just, just for giggles, see what this one's doing. Oh, a little bit more. Two pounds, 13.4 ounces on the trigger pull. Nice triggers, nice triggers. I need to remind myself, hang on. It is a single stage trigger. Yeah, it's a nice trigger, nice trigger, very predictable. Right then, what do you get in the box? Oh, I'll show you the box first anyway. So, Bagara's box, it is a cardboard box. Nothing majorly exciting, but inside, what to expect inside? You'll get the rifle. You'll get a bag that the bolt's in, which will be sort of in there. Uh, you'll get a sticker as well. And that's about it. Pretty much it. <laughs> Pretty much it for your uh, box. I've got the manual out. You do get a manual in there. This is the manual. It is pretty good, actually, to be fair. English is at the start. That's very nice. So I'll just have a quick flick through the manual. Decent diagrams. Obviously all your usual safety pointers. How to mount the scope, how to adjust the trigger, maintenance of the trigger. Not bad at all. It's kind of a generic um, manual for Bagara's range. Exploded diagrams. How to load the magazine. And it's got a bit of um, FAQs and troubleshooting. You shouldn't really have much trouble. How to strip the bolt, exploded diagrams of the bolt. Not bad, not a bad manual at all. Can't really moan about that. But, um, but yeah. An interesting rifle, guys, another option. I know there are loads of options out there, but something to throw in the mix if you want something a little different. You don't want to, you know, be one of the Teak guys. Nothing against Teak, I love Teak because I'm a massive fan of Teak, but you know, if you want to be a little bit different, this might be an option for you. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.